So, hello everyone. My name is Cricket Crockett, and I'm excited to be a part of this wonderful summit and to wrap things up during the four o'clock hour. Um, I've got lots to share with you, and um, my gosh, I mean, all these speakers have been fantastic. So, if you've been watching or you plan to do the replay, you're going to take so many notes. Um, not just me, just all the women before me just had such wisdom and encouragement, and um, it's a real blessing to be here. So, thank you. Thank you, Shannon, for um, being a part, uh, for, for putting all this together and inviting me to be a part of it. So I uh, sort of joined the um, lineup a little bit late because Shannon and I just met not too long ago, but um, I am privileged and honored to be here. So let me just tell you a little bit about myself before we get going. And then I'm going to share with you a message that I feel like God's really put on my heart um, just for you. So um, as I said, my name is Cricket Crockett. I am a certified leadership and life coach. Um, I'm also a best-selling author. Here is what my book looks like, The Mom in Me. It's an anthology book of um, lots of moms. It's a Christian book bringing all kinds of stories. So uh, if you, you know, maybe didn't get enough from Santa this year, you can pop on over to my website and get you a copy. Um, I'm also a speaker as you can see. And uh, my background, however, is in teaching and direct sales. So um, I have been in direct sales for about 20 years now altogether in uh, two different companies, actually. Um, I was a founding consultant for Southern Living at Home and a founding consultant for 31. So um, um, that's really between my heart for teaching um, and through being uh, a top level leader um, with those companies, I really found that I love to work with women and I love to coach them. I love to um, hold them accountable. I love to cheer them on and sort of have the privilege and the honor to watch them have that aha moment when they actually achieve the finish line of whatever their goal was, right? So, um, so this past year, you know, everybody talks about 2020. Yeah, right. But actually, it was a wonderful year for me where God gave me some real clarity and he's transitioning me out um, from the umbrella of direct sales. And I launched my own um, coaching business. So um, it's pretty it's pretty exciting. So I'd love for you to follow and like me. Um, and consider coaching with me. I have lots and lots of years of business coaching as a top level leader um, in direct sales, but now I get to do it with women and it's just heart to heart and it doesn't involve um, necessarily selling or recruiting, although I um, can definitely do business coaching as well. So I'm excited to bring you this message. That's a little bit of my story, just a little bit. Um, and, uh, but before I go too far into my story, I, I wanted to lead with what got me to coaching, um, and a little bit of who I am. Um, I live in Safety Harbor. I have two kids, but I'm an empty nester. Um, my daughter is home right now and heads back this week to college and I'll be sad, but I also will be secretly glad to have just me and my hubby back. So, um, Anyway, so that's kind of who I am. I hope that just connects you with me just a little bit before I share this on time message with you. So, um, so what I want to talk to you about is God sized dreams. That's what we're going to be talking about and being willing to um, launch your God sized dreams. So it's the beginning of a new year, right? We're just a few days in. And as we look into the future, I want to give you permission to dream bigger than you ever have before. You know, all success stories, no matter how big or how small um, the story is, um, if it's on a grand scale or maybe it's just close to home, success all starts with a dream, right? And what I want you to do is consider God-sized dreams rather than just our own. God desires to fill our hearts with big dreams. And if you're like me, you find it easy to dismiss them as impossible before you ever start. I get it. Like, I typically am not much of a dreamer. That's why God put me with my husband. He is a dreamer. Like, he goes for it. And I tend to like my feet on the ground, right? Like where I can control things, right? But that's not where the magic happens, right? So, 
you may be like me or maybe like um, our last speaker talked about the badge of busyness. Maybe you're just so consumed with getting from point A to point B as quickly as possible so that you can get to the real work of your calling. The struggle inherent to realizing God-sized dreams is put there on purpose, though. It's by a loving God who wants to draw us closer and enlarge the boundaries of, king of his kingdom. The struggle is the point, right? Like, if it were easy, we'd all be doing it, right? We'd all be successful in somebody's eyes or in our own eyes. But the struggle is the point. It is the real work. And here's why. God-sized dreams ensure our growth. When God calls us to something, you know, it can feel awkward at first, really uncomfortable, like, uh, I don't know if I'm qualified for this, right? Like, it's like somebody handing us the wrong size jeans in the dressing room. And as we put them on, we feel gaps in weird places or it pinches in others, right? Uh, hashtag 2020. Um, but we may find ourselves wanting to give back that and say, yeah, no, no, this is not a reasonably sized whatever pair of jeans. And that's how we act, uh, treat God-sized dreams, actually. We want to send it back saying, you know, all right, God, like I'm all game to, you know, do what you're calling me to do, but I'm going to need to work in the confines of a more reasonably sized dream and one that doesn't cause too much discomfort. But that's a huge mistake. God's hands us an extra large vision by design. He is not just interested in what we can accomplish for him, but in who we are becoming along the way. As we struggle to grow into what and who God calls us to be, we are changed and shaped more and more into the likeness of Christ. So another thing, God-sized dreams force us to invite others into a bigger story, right? I mean, we know this is not all about us, right? So when we have God-sized dreams, maybe it's a dream of adoption, or maybe it's a dream of buying a house. Um, maybe it's a dream to pay off medical bills or big debt. When we invite other people into our dream, they become part of the story and they get to dream big as well with God. We include others by either asking for help, like, Let's go back to the adoption thing. Maybe we have a GoFundMe, right? They get to be a part of it, right? Or we have other people that say, hey, I like what you're doing. I like where you're going. How can I help? So doing that invites others into a bigger story. God-sized dreams give glory to him, not us. And that's key. God is up to something big when he plants his dreams into our hearts. And it's so much bigger than us. When we stand at the base of an impossible mountain, shaking in our boots, knowing full well our legs could never carry us up to that summit, we're forced to rely only on God and praise him for every step he's enabled us to take along the way. There was a man who was given a hard life lesson about a God-sized dream, Gideon. If you're familiar with the story, you know where I'm headed. Gideon was called by God to defeat a neighboring nation. And this nation wasn't just any nation. Like they were the biggest, baddest, you know, insane nation, right? So just even being called by God was a huge deal and a huge dream of Gideon. But right after the Lord told him the mission, he said to Gideon, you have too many men. Gideon had 32,000 men. And at the time... That seemed big, but even then, compared to this neighboring nation, that was small. So Gideon obeyed, and he said to his army, if you're afraid, then you can go home. 22,000 men left, leaving only 10,000 men. Gideon's message just turned into a more difficult mission. But God wasn't done. He said to Gideon, there's still too many men. Can you imagine? Put yourself in Gideon's shoes right there. Like, what? Are you kidding me? This is like a huge nation. And, and now you want me to get rid of more men? And here's the key. God wanted to thin the army some more. So he took them to the river and he told Gideon to pay attention to the way these men drank from the river. 
9,700 men got on their knees to drink, while only 300 cupped their hands, pulling the water up to their mouth. God said, use the 300. Why is this important? To trust God with his goal, now it's bigger than what Gideon could have ever dreamed. It's a God-sized dream now. In order to win the battle with only 300 men? That's insane, right? Up against the biggest, baddest enemy? God will have to show up and do a miracle, something big. But with that 300, God does something even stranger next. He says, you're not going into battle at all, but you're still going to defeat these people. What I want you and your 300 men to do is to make as much noise as possible, yelling and trumpets and whatnot. And they did. They obeyed God and all the noise caused chaos and their enemy became confused in all the chaos. And in that confusion, they began to turn on themselves, killing themselves. Can you imagine? If Gideon had not knelt to what God was saying to him, if Gideon had not pushed aside what he was feeling in his flesh to bow to the God-sized dream, he didn't even have to go into battle and he still was victorious. There are so many things that we can learn from that story. God-sized dreams push us forward. And what I mean by that is they get us out of our comfort zone. Do you think Gideon felt more comfortable with 300 men than he would have with 32,000 men? Of course not. Just because he obeyed doesn't mean he wasn't afraid. Sometimes, ladies, we just got to do it afraid, right? You can be nervous in the midst of God's will as long as it doesn't stop you from obeying what he's calling you to do. God-sized dreams also give glory to God. And we touched on that a little bit earlier. God-sized dreams require us to give all the glory. Why did God put Gideon through that? Why didn't he just let Gideon go to war with the 32,000 he originally had? The Lord said to Gideon, give too many men. I cannot deliver your enemy into your hands or Israel will boast against me saying, my own strength has saved me. God-sized dreams have one thing in common. They require divine intervention. And because of that one requirement, God gets the glory in us. God won't share his glory with anyone. And for a good reason. He's the only one worthy of it. I don't say that lightly. It's something I've had to learn over and over in my own life. And I'm sure you can relate. Anytime I feel unappreciated, anytime I get puffed up or frustrated or doubt my worth, God reminds me, remember, you're nothing without me. And therefore, you're everything because of me. Trust me. God-sized dreams are not really about the size of the dream at all. Because he will blow us out of the water every time. Right? The Bible says in Isaiah, since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. The size of the dream isn't important. The size of our God is what is. And I guarantee you that no dream you could possibly dream up is bigger than what he has planned for both you and me. We just have to do our part. Listen and obey. Is your dream God ordained? If they are God sized or God planned, then I believe they will come to pass and you will be successful. So many times we get wrapped up in what we want that sometimes we forget to pause and actually ask God, is this where you're calling me? Is this where you want me to be? You know, another story from the Bible, which is a little bit more familiar, right? This time of year, um, that has a God-sized dream in it. It's the story of Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus. I'm sure Mary had many dreams, one of which I'm sure was to be a mother. 
But can you imagine a mother to the savior of, a, of the world, let alone a virgin mother, right? And what that, what kind of persecution that put her up against. I don't think those things ever crossed her mind. In fact, she was first found, when she first found out that she was pregnant, she was terrified. But she came to believe that this was part of a God-sized dream and plan for her life. Just as Jesus was hope for all the nation. So, with that, I want to change gears a little bit. I want to pivot. Now that we've talked about God-sized dreams, I want to encourage you to have big, wonderful, God-sized confidence and God-sized dreams in 2021. Listen, I know 2020 may have been difficult for you. It was a weird year. And even though God birthed great things out of us by forcing us into a pause, it has been a difficult year in many other ways. Maybe lately you have found your faith to be on sandy uh, foundation rather than the solid rock. Maybe you're struggling to dream. Maybe you're struggling with your direction. Are you feeling stuck? So what will 2021 hold for you? You know, you can be a huge part of that. You're the driving force for that. And your mindset and your relationship with the Lord is the gas behind all of that. So does the uncertainty of what the next 12 months may hold, does that scare you? Does it excite you? Maybe a little bit of both. So let's talk a little bit about how you can take a big gulp <laughs> and enter into 2021 with some God-sized dreams. All right. So gulp, right? I want to talk to you about that. I find that, you know, my background in teaching that people tend to remember things when there's, um, you know, little tricks to learning, right? So that's where the word gulp comes in. So first, I want to talk to you about G. Now would be a great time to take notes if you're not already. I want to talk to you about the letter G in gulp. That is glimpse, goals, and grow. First of all, let's look at the word glimpse. Glimpse is taking a look at your past. Maybe you've got a glimpse into your future. Maybe somebody has prophesied over you and that gave you a glimpse. I think it's really powerful to think about what worked in the past, what didn't work, and how can I use that as a resource going forward? You know, if you've had a glimpse into the grace that God has given us, then your life has been forever changed. So just a glimpse can be truly life-changing. The other word is goals, right? I know it's January. Everybody wants to talk about goals and we all kind of groan when we hear about it. But why do we always talk about goals? Not just in January, but year round. It's because they motivate us. They're important. So after your glimpse, I want you to work on your goals. They motivate you and they set benchmarks so that you can measure your success. Why is that important? So you can see how far you've grown. So when the critic in your head gets on board and says, eh, you haven't really made progress. Or when the enemy says to you and wants to attack you and says, no, you're not qualified. You're not good enough. You don't have this. You don't have that. Goals can measure that. And you can say, look, I started here and now I'm here. So enemy, get behind me. Or critic, I don't need you. I'm turning you off. So how are goals powerful? It's not enough just to say, you know, I want to lose weight, right? I mean, we can say that all day long, but the pounds won't just magically go off, right? We have to be specific. We have to make them challenging. We have to be authentic. Uh, and follow through is the hard part, right? Just saying it easy peasy, right? But the actual work behind the goal, that can be tough. So I recommend that you work with a coach. I'd love to work with you. Um, an accountability partner, a pacing partner, 
because feedback is really important. Let's say you wanted to learn how to play tennis and you'd never picked up a racket before. Are you just going to go out on the court with a racket and a tennis ball? You don't know how to hit it well. You don't know where to hit it, what's in, what's out, how to keep score. No, you hire a tennis coach. So that's why I feel like a coach is really, really important with all of what I'm sharing today. Just so happens, I am one. So, <laughs> so I'd be happy to help you. But we've got lots of other great coaches in this networking group as well. The last one I want to talk about is grow. That's obvious, right? But it's all about taking charge. You're not going to grow sitting still, right? Think of a plant. You have to give it enough sunlight, enough water, right? So do the work. Take charge. Invest in a coach. Take the class and launch the dream. So our next letter in gulp is you. Uncover, understand, and unleash. So with uncover, I want you to dig deep. I want to encourage you to think about what do I need to get started? And don't get caught up in perfection, perfectionism with that, right? Just think about what do I need? What do you already have? During this uncovering process, this is the time to uncover truths and the lies. What does God say to you? What is he calling you to? And it's really important, I think, too, to analyze your previous attempts. Certain things that you may call failure are actually so valuable. People fail, and you will too, at whatever your dream is. But that doesn't mean your dream won't happen. It just means God's refining it to be a God-sized dream. Understand, this is putting the pieces together. Everything that you've uncovered, everything that you have um you know, come to understand, put them together and apply it to begin the goal work, the solving problems, the creating new ideas. Pray and ask God for understanding, insight, discernment. Be consistent. James 1, 5 says, if you lack wisdom, go to God who gives it generously. That's pretty powerful. And the last one is unleash. Release from restraint. That's what that word means. How many of you have a restraint around your dream or your God-sized dream? Maybe it's doubt. Maybe it's fear. Maybe it's finances. Maybe it's whatever it is, but it's holding you back. Maybe it's your mindset. Release it. Let it go. Give it to the Lord. Surrender it. It's not serving you, and it's not getting you closer to your goals nor your dreams. You know, it's really all about being free. And that doesn't mean being careless. That doesn't mean without structure. I mean, I get it. I like structure. But being surrendered and being unleashed is powerful. There's a verse in Luke, I believe, Luke 13, I think, that says, woman, you have freed yourself of the weakness of yours. Thou art loosed, right? That was a powerful conference years ago. It may even still be going on. Um, T.D. Jakes did it. And I, for one, can say I attended it and was loosed. And it was a God-ordained deliverance. And I needed that in order to move forward in a healthy way. So I invite you to be loosed, to be unleashed. All right, so let's move on to learn. This is, or to L rather. This, the first one is learn, level up, and launch. I got to tell you, before I came up with any of these other words, level up, I knew I wanted to talk to you about leveling up. And in fact, I've seen it here and there and here and there since I came up with the word level up. Well, I say I came up. I don't think I did at all. I think this was a God-planted word in my heart. And I believe it's my word of 2021. It's time to level up. But before we get there, let's talk about learn for just a few minutes. It's really important, no matter what your God-sized dream is, to always be a student of yourself and your dream. Always be learning. 
Know your strengths and your weaknesses. One of the tools I love to use with my clients is the Enneagram. It's a personality typing tool that can be very powerful. It can help you know yourself, or as the Bible says, know thyself in a better and more powerful way, as well as have mercy and grace for others who are different than you. It's a powerful tool. So if you don't know about it, I invite you to, you know, give me a call. Let's connect. and I can share more about it with you. It's important to learn in multiple ways, podcasts, courses, a mentor, a coach, books, and a course experience. You know more than you're giving yourself credit for. So let's move on to my new favorite word, level up. This means to bring increase. And who doesn't want that in 2021? Simply put, it means to improve your current station in a way that creates a powerful shift. And it starts with a change in thought, a shift in your mindset, followed by a brave action. Leveling up makes me think of video games back in the 80s, right? Where when the game first started, you started with basic gear and maybe three lives, right? But if you got the opportunity based on your performance to level up, then maybe you earned extra lives or extra weapons or in whatever game you're playing. But you know, it's true. Like that is what leveling up in life is in a lot of ways. In fact, when I looked up level up, I had no idea that there is a song right now uh, on the pop charts. I don't know this song at all, but I looked up the lyrics and I wanted to share a few of them with you. So forgive me as I read. It says, them old mistakes are gone. I won't do them no more. That's old news. There's new news. I did that before. I turned nothing into something. My comeback is 100. Let Less talking, more action. I just keep elevating. No losses, just upgrading. My lessons made blessings. I turned that into money. Thank God I never settled. This view is so much better. I'm chilling. I'm winning like on another level up 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 on my way level up level 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 up thank god i never settled this view is so much better i'm chilling i'm winning like on another level I, seriously i don't even think i've heard that song but those lyrics is exactly what leveling up is all about the last one for L is launch. Set something in motion. Give yourself permission to go for it. It doesn't have to be perfect. So that leads us to the last P in gulp. So that is pause, perspective, and prosper. So let's start with pause. So my whole vision, my whole mission in my coaching um, business is to work with women who are highly driven, highly motivated, multifaceted, who are working hard, who are in leadership in any level, like perhaps in their side gig, in their home, in their church, or maybe in their corporate job. So I work with these women to recognize the power of pushing pause because many times these women are close to burnout and don't even realize it. And that's near and dear to my heart because that was me. You know, I mentioned to you my background in direct sales. I promoted to the top level of our career path in five years, in less than five years actually, which is unheard of. I saw the goal and I just kept running but what happened along the way was detrimental. I didn't push pause. I wasn't willing to consider my own needs. I wasn't paying attention to what the red flags my body was sending. And I was forced into a pause. But I like to work with women so that they can recognize the power of pause, the power of pushing pause in their own lives so that they're not forced into a pause. You know, many of us during the summit have talked about bouts of depression or anxiety. That's kind of what I'm talking about. We can avoid those things just in the power of pressing pause. So what is pause? It's a moment in time where we deliberately slow down just enough, not stopping, but just enough slow down to create that pause. The pause can be a few minutes or even longer. And it's not about stopping, as I said, you know, 
It's just a temporary lull in activity. You think about a family who's traveling across the country doing a road trip, right? They might pause at the rest stop or pause to go through the drive through or get gas, but they don't stop until they get to their destination. So I'm talking about that moment where we can pause, take a breath, take stock. Where am I going? What am I doing? What is God calling me to? Am I operating in my strengths? Am I too frazzled to think straight? Am I really serving anybody? Am I working towards my goals or am I just plagued with busyness? The pause can simply be obeying your Apple watch when it tells you to breathe like a minute long, or it can be longer, like a time of prayer, a time of journaling, or it could be several days like a hiatus or a retreat. Whatever the pause is, whatever you choose for it to be, it's not about the perfect amount of time. It's about your mindset and the intentionality and devotion behind it. Pause gives us time, perspective, clarity, peace, renewal, a changed mindset, a narrowed vision, and purpose. So how can you pause? Well, I already sort of alluded to that. It can be as simply as you know, obeying your Apple Watch, journaling, whatever. But the first and most powerful way I believe that you can pause is rest. Rest. How many of you out there, when you feel the need to rest, shake it off because somehow along the way you thought rest equals laziness or rest means I'm not getting my to-do list done, right? Those are cobwebs that you need to clear, girlfriend, because rest is so good for us. If you've been through trauma, and hey, even like 2021, I mean, even if you didn't have COVID, even if you didn't lose a loved one, even if nothing traumatic happened to you, specifically 2021, I mean, excuse me, 2020 was still traumatic. So your brain needs rest. And I'm not talking about just sleep, although that's fine. The amount of time that you're asleep, getting good quality sleep at night is very important. And I'm not just talking about naps, but I'm talking about being still as well. Being still, leaning back, closing your eyes, resting, blocking out all the stimulation, being still. No music, no phones, no TV, no nothing. Rest. The other thing that you can do for the pause that is almost just as important as rest is breathing. <laughs> Believe it or not, breathing, right? And you're saying like, hello, I'm alive, so I breathe. But I'm talking about a really powerful deep belly breath where you breathe in through the nose. You don't breathe with your chest. You breathe with your belly, your diaphragm. And then you breathe out through pursed lips like you're blowing a kiss. That's important because it slows down the breath. Breathing correctly, deep belly breaths is linked to improved cognitive performance, lower stress, lower blood pressure, building immunity. Um, it gets rid of brain fog. It improves digestion. It supports posture. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Breathing is really important. And in fact, I love to work on breathing sessions with my clients. I know that sounds crazy, but if you don't stop and pause and do that pause self-care with a coach or somebody who can hold you accountable to, to walk you through a breathing exercise, to walk you through directive prayer, it's really important. So again, you know, working with a coach, that's part of self-care. That's part of pause doing rewirement exercises. That's really important. Getting creative. What I don't want you to do in the pause is return to your old uh, coping mechanisms. Don't try to multitask. There's so many, so much research that says you're not actually doing more. In fact, you're actually making more mistakes and taking longer. So it just doesn't make sense at all to attempt to multitask. Resist the shoulda, coulda, wouldas. Mary Ann said that earlier, and it was so good. Res just resist them. They're not serving you. And don't justify your busyness. I get it. Pushing pause is counterintuitive, but it works, and it's important. So let's move on to perspective. Perspective is simply a connection to your mission. 
It's the get out of your head. It's the roll with it moment, right? Get perspective. Work on your empathy meter. Of course, the best way to do that is to serve others, to push pause, and to see yourself in somebody else's shoes, to try to see things from their line of sight or their POV point of view. The last P is prosper. To prosper means Blessing, success, mindset, favor, well-being, and growth. But what we all think about with Prosper is money. And I get it. Like, And I'm even going to talk about that a little bit. How do we prosper God's way? With diligence. We seek him. We seek righteousness. We walk in his ways and we honor him with our wealth. We all have businesses, right? We're entrepreneurial women. We're high functioning, highly driven, um, and we. Unless you're doing this as a ministry, then you're doing it as a business. And what that means is, you need to bring in money, right? And that's okay. It is not a sin to need or want money, or to want increased amount. Prosperous means success. We're rich means wealth or dollar signs. So let's talk a little bit because a a lot of people will talk about like sort of the prosperity message and how that's contrary to God's word. But the truth of the matter is God wants you to pay your bills, right? He just doesn't want you to covet and he doesn't want you to live in excess. Making, um, uh, being rich, a primary pursuit, that's the problem. Coveting, that's the problem. Do not toil to acquire wealth. That's what it says in Proverbs. But yet Solomon was promised riches and became the richest king on earth. So let's not let the world twist this, what God has for us. He wants to bless us, right? He wants us to uh, live abundantly. He doesn't condemn anyone for having riches, but he gives warning to those who seek after them, the riches, more than they seek after him. So that's the important key here. It's not a sin to want nice things. The sin is when we want them more than we want God. And that's the problem. It is possible though, to live a prosperous life with an abundant and prosperous mindset on a modest income. It's all a question of attitude and mindset. So when it comes to your business, bring God into your big dreams about income. He wants to be a part of it. I want you to dream big dreams with God. Make them God-sized dreams, right? And then pray bigger than your dream is. I want to share with you just briefly a little bit more about my story. Back when I was climbing up the direct sales ladder as fast as I possibly could, I was doing that almost in an effort to numb myself. You see, our firstborn was born with multiple special needs, yet he was high functioning. So to the world, on the outside, he looked like a pretty normal kid. But inside our home, he was quite the challenge. He had anxiety, depression, suicidal tendencies, OCD, um, possible bipolar, and all of this was like around the age of seven. To date, he's in his 20s, and um, his latest diagnosis was uh, borderline personality disorder. So to say that raising him was a challenge, it's an understatement. And the enemy obviously used that in many ways to make me feel shame and guilt. I would often hear, what kind of mother are you? While that was going on, I also had my mom, who was a dear friend of mine as well, become ill with cancer. And she lived from diagnosis to death two years. And during that time, she asked me to be by her bedside. You see, I was raised in a very dysfunctional home. The only time we ever went to church was on the flower holidays, right? Like poinsettia, Christmas, you know, Lily, Mother's Day (laughs) or Easter, right? Um, So 
that was about my only connection to the Lord uh, growing up. My mom grew up in a very strict Christian home. So when she went off to college, she rebelled and she turned her back on God and married the leader of the pack, my dad, who was a wild man. And actually her parents told him not to marry him. She did anyway. So when he became an alcoholic, an abuser to both of us, my mom and I bonded in some unhealthy ways. That happens, right? When you are under the, uh, the view of a, an abuser. So when I lost my mom, I didn't just lose a mom. I lost my patient, my best friend. You know, we bonded almost like friends instead of mother and daughter. So I had this child who's special needs and very difficult. I had a mom that had just passed away or was sick. I had multiple miscarriages in between the two. And now I had my daughter. And um, I was burning my candle at both ends. So then here comes this direct sales opportunity. And it was a great distraction, right? In some bad ways, actually. It was good, though. I mean, don't get me wrong, right? I was a first grade teacher. So to make that kind of money was an insane blessing. I earned free trips for both my husband and I, and we were able to pay off our cars. And, you know, I mean, so there were certainly blessings in it, but it became unhealthy for me because it became my idol and it became my distraction from real life. At the same time, my husband was working literally in another state and was commuting back and forth. He was in the car six hours a day, three hours there, three hours back. And he was in a different time zone. So all while I was trying to take care of my son, my daughter, attempting but not really to grieve my mom's death while building an empire, I was just stuffing all of this pretty much as a single parent because my husband would get up at five, let me leave by five and get home by nine. We were two ships passing the night and we were on survival mode and it was not pretty. And things began to get worse with my son after puberty. And long story short, things got quite violent in our home at the hand of my son. I put my business on hold to homeschool him just to get him through um, high school, honestly. Um, he would go off and on his meds. I mean, it was just rough. And I don't want to go through all the hard part. What I want to go through with you is the redemptive beauty from ashes that God does. You see, even though I was a believer that whole time, I was not willing to be still long enough to hear the voice of God. Being still meant I could hear the grief, the sadness, all the ugly things I didn't want to make time for because they were messy. And I had to do this, this, and this, right? And therefore, as I mentioned earlier, I was forced into a pause. I was in the bed for weeks, pouring out my heart, crying so hard that one day my daughter called my husband at work and said, I'm really worried about mom. Even though these noises were coming out of me, crying so hard, I knew that God was saying, let it go. Let it go for the first time, grieve your mom. For the first time, grieve having a son with multiple special needs. Grieve the losses. Grieve the fact that your marriage is in survival mode and that you barely know each other. Let it go. Surrender it. It was a purging that lasted many weeks. And on the outside, it looked like depression, serious depression. And it was. I'm not saying it wasn't. But between me and God, it was a sweet time of him reminding me, I'm here. I can take it. Dump your burdens on me. I was so in burnout, clinical burnout, that it was scary. I felt trapped. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to get out of this direct sales company. You know, I was the breadwinner. But God birthed in me a God-sized dream then. He said, everything you're going through and everything you have gone through will be used for my glory. You are going to speak such life into other women 
who aren't willing to pause, to ask themselves, to ask God, where do you want me? Where are you calling me? What am I ignoring? What am I sweeping under the rug? God gave me this peace during a very ugly time that made me realize I'm going to use this for my glory. I don't know what that's going to look like. I'm in the midst of still my God-sized dream. And it's pretty amazing the things that he's doing. That's the beauty of a God-sized dream as we get to just sit back and watch God show off. And isn't he good at it? He's so good. It's when we get our hands in the mix that we tend to mess everything up. So for me and for you, I want to tell you that 2021 is your year of breakthrough. I believe it for me. I believe it for you. It is time to level up. It is time to take a big gulp and dream bigger dreams, set bigger goals, make greater commitments to step outside our comfort zone, plunge into the life wholeheartedly that God has placed the dream he's placed in your heart more than you ever have before. Of course, I want you to do it in a healthy way, right? I want you to set boundaries. I want you to ask yourself, is this moving me towards my God-sized dream or is this a distraction? Is this where God is calling me? Does this line up with my goals? Does this line up with my vision? Because if it doesn't, I want to encourage you to be a recovering people pleaser and say, no. And if it does, I want to encourage you to go for it and do it afraid, even though it may be scary. So I'm wondering, can you identify with burnout? Are you on the brink of burnout and you don't even know it? Can you resonate with the need to take a big gulp, to take a glimpse, to look at your goals, to uncover and understand, to gain perspective, to begin to prosper all in the pause? Are you ready to learn? Are you ready to dig deeper? I think you are. I think we all are. And I think that's the beauty of 2020 is God used it as a period of rest in many ways. By being in quarantine, we were, you know, sort of secluded from the whole world. And it was our time to be still, to pause. Now it's our time to grow, to prosper, to launch. Now it's your turn. So I want to leave you with a little bit of a challenge. If any of this resonated with you and you're ready to become unstoppable, you're ready to claim 2021 as your year, you're ready to learn how to market yourself so that you're irresistible, that what you have to offer out there is something people need and it's a value. Are you ready to do it afraid in every area of your life? Then this is my challenge to you. Maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. I want you to intentionally block out time, make an appointment with you to pause, to be still. And be still for maybe the first five, 10 minutes, if you can. And then after that, just being still, just ask God, show me what, you, what I need to know. Show me, speak to me, Lord, where are you calling me? And then after that time of pause, I want you to do a brain dump. <laughs> and what that means is get out a piece of paper and write down every crazy thing that God has put in your heart and in your mind during that pause, everything. Then take that piece of paper and lay your hands on it and pray over them. Say, Lord, I don't understand some of the stuff that's on here but I commit them to you. Surrender them. Surrender. And then as you begin to gain clarity, maybe on your own, or maybe with, you know, a business partner, a coach, whatever the case may be, I want you to begin to activate and be intentional. So your challenge is pause, brain dump, pray and surrender, and activate and be intentional. And if you should experience failure, that's okay. God's just refining you. And if you should experience overwhelm, pause and be thankful for that experience because those 
experiences are opportunities of growth and refinement. So one more thing before I finish up here. If this resonates with you, I want to share with you that on my website, cricketcrocket.com, and I can have it come up here. There we go. Cricketcrocket.com. I have a free gift for you when you subscribe on my website. Um, it's called New Year, New You. And what it is, is a PDF, a couple of pages long, that helps you think about who do I want to be this year? How do I want to show up? Forget about the past, you know, if it, if it makes you feel shame. Forget about it. Surrender it to God. Move on. Let it go. Unleash it. Who do I want to be now? How do I want to show up? How is God calling me? And there's also a burnout quiz in that uh, free gift that I think might help you. Many of us don't even realize it. Most of us don't even realize it. I know I didn't. I didn't realize how unhealthy I was because I was ignoring all the signs because I didn't have time. I don't have time to deal with that. I, you know, I got to recruit this person. I got to sell this. I got to book this party. I've got to develop another leader. I've got to do another training, you know, whatever the case may be. I don't have time. I don't have time to grieve my mom's death. I don't have time. I don't have time. That was the lie. And it didn't do me any favors, but God is good. He is so good. So I think that that might help some of you. Um, if you want to know about upcoming events that I'm doing, um, that's another way to be in touch with me and to also like and follow um, me on Instagram and on um, my Facebook page as well. So I have one more thing I want to offer you. Um, if you're in burnout, or maybe you're not, Maybe you just feel frazzled. Maybe you're, you just lack clarity. Maybe you're just not sure. Maybe God's put so much on your heart. You're like, I don't even know where to start, Cricket. I can help. And, and as a gift from me to you, I am offering a 12-week coaching program for you at 40% off this year. But there's a catch. There's a word you've got to give me. Can you guess what the word may be? Gulp. <laughs> That's the secret word for this exclusive 40% off. So if you will contact me and give me the code word gulp, I will offer this for you for 40% off. Maybe you don't need me, but maybe you know somebody you're like, oh my gosh, this whole time cricket that you've been speaking, I've been thinking about my girlfriend, you know, whatever. Like I've been thinking about my friend. I've been thinking about my aunt. I've been thinking about my mom. I've been thinking about my sister. I've been thinking about a coworker. Um, so you can give her that referral code and I will honor it for a referral as well. So that concludes everything I want to share with you today. I thank you so much for sticking it out and being with me. Um, the last session of this incredible summit. Ladies, I appreciate you so much. And Shannon, thank you so much for asking me to be a part of it. Um, I would love if, if some of you ladies have speaking opportunities where you're looking for other speakers, I would love to be a part of that um, as well, as it's truly my heart to just encourage others. You know, God uses our stories, good, bad, ugly, and beautiful. He uses our stories. Um, and so I would be honored to uh, share my story with your audience so it can encourage them. So that's it for me, ladies. And um, just like I thought Marianne had a great idea um, on the last um, session that I will hop on and answer any of your questions um, after I conclude the live. Um, feel free to check me out on Facebook and Instagram and message me directly as well. Um, I'm happy to talk to you. And I do offer a free discovery call at no obligation. If you just want to you know, get to know me and see if we might be a good fit for coaching. So thank you ladies so much. I very much appreciate it. And I very much appreciate our time today. Have a blessed 2021. This is your year. I believe it and I know it. It's time to level up. Thank you.